starts now. Mobile is now the second largest city in Alabama. Last night, three of the four communities proposed for annexation voted in favor of joining the city of Mobile. This brings the city's population to more than 200,000 people, allowing for more federal funding. By joining the city, the Cottage Hill Corridor, Orchard Estates, and Kings Branch communities now have access to Mobile's public services. So we want to be able to guarantee fire and police protection. We want to be able to return emergency medical services back out here, as well as garbage and trash services. Let's take a look now at the new map of Mobile. The areas you see in green are the communities that voted to join the city. Now this vote puts Mobile behind only Huntsville in terms of population. Now Mobile's Mayor Sandy Simpson joined us on set today. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mayor. Good to be here, Kim. Now, this is an exciting time we know for yeah. the city of Mobile because uh, those numbers are going to open up the doors. Let's talk about that first. Um, there's a big push. How is it going to better our city? Well, Kim, one of the ways that will help, and we talked about the 200,000, that was the number that people were interested in. I mean, when you make the reference to uh, grants and federal grants, but we every year we're applying for police grants and fire grants. Some of them actually help subsidize or pay for the salaries, mm -hmm. depending on what they're doing, but it also can be for equipment. And so being above 200,000, you know, and the police and fire grants are just some of the grants that we apply for. So anyway, so that will be a big help, you know. It's not a major part of our budget for sure, but every little bit helps, and so that's just one aspect of it. I know a lot of people have been saying that we need better uh, protection, and if you're talking about better protection with better equipment is going to help out with that, making our city safer. Absolutely. Well, we've, we've really right now, because of what we've been doing over the last five to seven years, we re really have excellent equipment. But right now, today, we can't patrol out in the jurisdiction, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you can't patrol in an area, you really can't, say, defer, uh, deter crime. So uh, today, we only can respond if someone calls us. And so by having our policemen be able to patrol in there will certainly make a difference. And so that'll be a, a big impact. And once the vote is certified, which we think will be next Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll be able to turn on a lot of the city services. Now, at the beginning of the annexation talk, we yeah. know that there was a lot of pushback from several different organizations mm -hmm. saying this was going to affect the majority minority uh, yeah. districts. Yeah. Is that the case or so they going to stay the same? There, there are no surprises, okay? The maps that we put out, the numbers of citizens that we said would be there, the ratios that we uh, calculated for majority minority, it's exactly what we said it would be. I mean, it hasn't changed, and so there should be no surprises in all of those conversations were very public conversations, so there, again, nobody should be surprised at where we are. Okay, yeah. now with adding the new population yeah. in from out in the county, this is gonna make District 6 pretty huge. So actually, uh, we have to redistrict, okay? It's not mm -hmm. just District 6, okay? Some of them will probably end up in District 7, uh, especially uh, in Kings Branch and Orchard Estates. So we, we have to rebalance uh, the number of citizens in each city council district. So six can't all of a sudden have 40,000 people in it, okay, and the rest have, you know, 25, or whatever the number would be. And so now we've got to rebalance, and so all the district lines will be redrawn somewhat. So we'll go through redistricting, uh, but having just done that not long ago, we know the process. Yeah, yeah, and so you know how soon we're looking at redistricting? I really don't, okay. I think what we're, the, I focus right now is going to be on uh, providing the services, you know, police, fire, emergency medical, garbage and trash, and then getting things turned on having to do with uh, permitting and so forth. Those are the, that's our area of focus right now because the redistricting really won't kick in until there's another city election. So we have a little time to do that. Okay, now what about those who voted not to annex? I know that's the airport corridor in that area. Mm -hmm. Uh, are they going to lose some of that police and fire service? Because you were saying that's one of the problems well, that we don't have enough people. They're, they're still in the in the jurisdiction, okay? And so they will still receive the same police and fire. They will not receive any uh, emergency medical services, okay? So they, they there does not change unless the city council decides to roll back, you know, some part of the jurisdiction. So we can't... Uh, if you're in the jurisdiction, we have to apply whatever mm -hmm. services we provide in one part of the jurisdiction have to be supplied in the other part. So nothing will really change for them uh, as it was yesterday, 
Okay, today, they're going to get the same services. They're just not going to get the new services that those that voted to come in are going to get. And when do those new services are okay. expecting to start? So, uh, upon certification, at that point in time, we are planning to turn on uh, the police and the fire, I mean, yeah, well, excuse me, the, the police where you're patrolling, the emergency medical services at that time. October 1st is our target date for garbage and trash. Uh, for, from a permitting standpoint, we're pointing toward uh, doing that um, upon certification. But we're, we're looking at all of those things and seeing, you know, what are we legally required to do and what's it going to take to get the manpower up and how we get all that done. So it's been fast and furious at City Hall all, all day today. I bet and there's going to be a fast and furious for the next couple of weeks, maybe into the months, <laughs> no. until everything is up and going. No, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be all the way up to we start providing the service, especially with garbage and trash. Yeah. All right, Mayor Stimson, thank you so much for joining us on set today. We truly appreciate it. Well, look, thanks for what you did. Right, welcome back. We have Mobile's Mayor Sandy Stimson joining us on set today. We're talking about the big vote yesterday with annexing parts of West Mobile into the city, now making us the second largest city in Alabama once again, because at one time we held that title. That's right. You know, you'd find it interesting when we were doing polling about the, the, finding out how people felt about being annexed in mm -hmm. and being a larger city. It was amazing the number of people that said, hey, and I also want to be the second largest city again. And we just kind of said, well, that's pretty interesting, you know. But for some people, they want that bragging right, you know. Yeah, and there's a lot of benefits that go with it and, as well. And, and it's not just bragging rights. You're exactly right. Because when we are recruiting mm -hmm. uh, business and we're trying to convince people to come to the city of Mobile, you know, it's important that you can say, hey, we are a growing city with the second largest city in the state of Alabama. And you start from there, but that tees you up for other conversations that you can have uh, as you start then wading into the, the, what other industries located here and because of all of our infrastructure and so So it is definitely a, a strong talking point for us to uh, leverage off of. And we have so many different companies with Airbus, with also that are constantly looking for people to come work for us. Yeah. So that's another darling thing. Hey, you know what? We're this large city that now we have all these jobs. Come work, come live. That's, Kim, you're exactly right. And that, that is how kind of the conversation goes. And we, you know, the Chamber of Commerce is always out there promoting the city. And so, you know, but also, know this that but as cities as they um, have a declining population you've got to stop that okay well, I think mm -hmm. that this is going to give us that boost that we need so there are other areas that can be developed but also we've also talked about redeveloping the parts of uh, the inner city you know that need to have housing on and so that's going to give us some time to make sure we get those programs right and for them to take effect so it's not just that we're going to always grow going to the west We've got to grow inside uh, the city also. And well, that's going to start once I-65, and that's going to happen. Yeah, and when you're talking about the redevelopment in the city, there's so many people who need affordable housing who yeah. are looking for that, and that's yeah. on the agenda as well? Yes, it, it, it has been since day one. Affordable housing now is such a heavy lift just because of all the HUD regulations that go along with it. Uh, it I mean, it's very complicated, but we have one of the first projects that we've been involved with actually coming out of the ground uh, off of uh, Hertel Street. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, that's going to be real exciting, but it's, it's going to be um, kind of a message that, hey, they do know how to do this and we can get this right. The developers on the outside, they want to do business with the city that understands it. And so we've got developers. We also have the money right now. So it's a matter of uh, lining the developer up with the right piece of property, you know, getting the funding, and then you're off to the races. So can we see the landscape kind of change oh, maybe absolutely. downtown? And you're you're going to see the landscape definitely change. Now, it will not be in um, congregated areas, you know, uh, like it's been in the past. I mean, one of the um, kind of mandates from HUD is they do not want to see what we conventionally think of as housing developments where you've congregated uh, in one area. They, they want to see it spread out. And so mm -hmm. you will see apartment complexes and other housing spread around the city that typically we've not seen in Mobile. All right, so it's going to be interesting to see. Now, for those people who did not want to annex, but now they, they're they annexed because they don't have a choice, yeah. you were talking, we were talking earlier, you were saying it's going to be worthwhile for them. Well, first off, it, it, I, I, last night my first remarks to the team and the media was that I wanted to thank the people in West Mobile for giving us the chance to serve them. I mean, really, I mean, they're, they are, this is a huge change, and so they're taking a risk in their mind. 
But well, we are determined that we're going to provide services superior to what they think that City of Mobile is capable of doing. And in doing so, those people that did not vote, but let's just say if you live in the Cottage Hill corridor and you're one of those that you really didn't want to be a part of the City of Mobile, our, our mission is to make sure that we provide service in such a way that there will be a point in time when you say, you know, um, this is a good deal for us. And it will be a win-win. I mean, because if, if they, the number of people that we're bringing in the city, they will have an impact on the direction of this city. And we want them to feel a part of it. Yes. So they can weigh in and let their voices be heard to make sure that we're, as a community, are headed in the right direction. So it's a, it's a sea change. It's great. We all love our city, and we all want our city to be the best city yeah, in I'm, Alabama. So we're going to head that way. That's exactly right. All right. Mayor, thank you so much again yeah. for being with us on set. We truly appreciate yeah. it, and we're looking forward to see what's going on the next few months. Yeah, good deal, Kim.